Hi everyone, it's Rene here from Rev Evolution. We're here at the one and only resort, and I'm here with the man who's creating all those fabulous dishes which we're gonna be enjoying later on in the day. It is none other than the man himself, Chef Su Kim Hock. So Hi. thank you so much for joining us right here on Pleasure. Rev. All right, Su Chef, all right, I've got actually more than four questions, but I tried to limit that. Okay, okay. I, no, you're no, such an interesting guy. Be, There's just yes. so many questions yes. I got for you. Okay, first question, Chef. Tell us a bit more about the style of cooking and what made you decide to get into this industry? Right, so uh, well, I'm I'm the last last in my family, so I'm the youngest of uh, of my siblings. So I think we've i I'm I'm born in a family of uh, Pranakan. Right. right. So okay. my my grandmother's Pranakan, my mother is not because you know, my grandfather got married to my my grandmother got married to my grandfather, which is a Chinese man. So right. we kind of lost that status. Okay. But the thing is, uh, my mom's a very very good cook. Right. right, and being the youngest in the in the family, you know, your mother will always put you in the kitchen, <laughs> and then that's how I kind of first started cooking. Cool. Um, so if you ask me, you know, my style of cooking now, um, I think the style of cooking of uh, my restaurant Au Jardin is very much um, French. Uh, French, um, we it is French anchored, but also as much as possible, we try to include the, the local culture and also the ingredients. I think ingredients is the key now because to a certain extent, our, mem our menu planning or the skeletal of our menu planning is always the product. I think it's always product driven, regardless if it's vegetable or regardless if it's seafood, you know, it's, it's that. So, and also, you know, I also incorporate a little bit of my background. Uh, so I started my, my cooking career in the UK and then from there, I came back to Malaysia and I went to Taiwan. So every one of these kind of plays a part in what I, I do today and, um, right. and what I serve in the restaurant today. Right. Yeah. So, so it's giving you a, a bit of a taste of uh, your different experiences all over the place. And oh, yes. You're coming yes, here yes. and gelling it together in one location. Yes, yes, right, yes, 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 yes. Right. Next question I have for you is, what is one of the most memorable chefs you have worked with? One of the most memorable chefs, like on, honestly, I, I, have, I have too many memorable chefs. <laughs> okay. But uh, in, if there's anything, I think uh, Stephen Smith from Freemason's Arms at Weasel. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think he's the one that introduced me to you know, the fine dining world, right? And think, if there's anything, you know, Michelin guy, you know, for, for Asians, right. 13, 15 years ago, it's not a big thing, right? We, like, no one knows what Michelin guy is, right? right. So, so they are the first few that introduced me to this, this sort of cuisine and also, you know, the finesse of the cuisine and the importance of delivering it that way. And I think that kind of helped, helped me to shape, you know, what, what I do today and also the passion to, to encourage my passion as well. Right. Okay. So this next yeah. question basically touches a bit more about the first uh, question, the answer that you gave me basically. Tell us a bit more about uh, the cuisine being served in Ojadin. So cuisine in Ojadin. So what we do um, is, like I said just now, uh, we change our menu on a monthly basis. So it's always very, very ingredient focused. So we work with, as much as possible, we work with uh, local farmers from the island itself or from the, the mainland of Penang. That's our first priority. <clears throat> and then from there, uh, but the thing is, you know, you, you're, you're only limited to all those ingredients, right? right? So we will venture a little bit further, which is basically Nacho Malaysia. Um, <clears throat> so we, we actually give credits as much as possible. We don't give credits to all these farmers because the thing is, I think the initiative of the government is always very, very different. It's to grow more, right? It's not growing better or it's growing more varieties. Right. It's to grow more because the thing is, uh, the, there's this always this importance of feeding your people enough, right. and then I I think uh, there's there's some lack of encouragement when it comes to uh, growing better. Uh, with uh, in which case you know uh, my previous experiences, you know people grow better because people appreciate all this all this artisanal or heirloom or you know different varietal of of plants or vegetables. Right. Um, so I think whoever that could kind of put the farmer on the map or to appreciate their effort is us, uh, the chefs, the restauranteur, the one that choose what to put in their menu. And that's the reason why uh, we, we, we always like to showcase uh, their produce. Right. 
And I think it's really good in the in the sense that um, the push for you know the local produce because also that is, is in terms of sustainability, you're helping the local farmer, you know, you're helping the economy as well. So everything is, you know, like I said, it really boils down back to helping the people that you in the country that you're actually yeah, cooking yeah. in as well. So it's yeah. great. All right, final question for you, chef. Uh, what is the advice for aspiring chefs like me <laughs> who uh, want to find out more, uh, you know, who want to further their careers in you know cooking more, getting to be you know as you know. All right. <laughs> I want to be right, look, you know, I, uh, <laughs> honestly, I, I, um, I, I, I think, look, you know, first, first and foremost, we have to understand that this is uh, a very, very physical job, right? So, so the thing is, at some point of your career, you know, you might, you might meet obstacles, or you might question yourself because you know you're not. Because the thing is, also, uh, I think I highlighted in a couple of interviews, um, you, you see a lack of patience now in in younger chefs. Right and and patience is really the key. As much as is is very very cliche, you still need to persevere and you still need the patience because the thing is, if you were to look at cooking, cooking is repetitive work. Right, it's a lot of muscle memories. Uh, you cannot teach a person how to how to use a whisk even right in one day because that's a lot of repetitive work. Right, so so I think I think to a certain extent, uh, fundamental cooking. The fundamentals of cooking and the foundation of cooking is very, very important before you aim higher. Right. I think a lot of a lot of a lot of young chefs aspire to be great chefs someday. Right. And and with the transparency of the medias, you know, uh, it's easier to see, you know, what success has one chef mm. done and whatnot. That kind of even push the patients down. I, I want to I wanna be this chef or I want to be a great chef in, in a matter of two, three years, mm. right? So I, I, I think what is very, very important is still to build the foundation, the foundation of cooking before, uh, before being creative.